2.1 Functions and Equivalent Algebraic Expressions Example 1 and Is f at x equal to g of x? So we're looking at two functions here and we need to determine if the two functions are equal. How would you go about doing that? Well, I think what you need to do is look at the two equations and see what form they're in. You'll notice that this one looks like it's in expanded form. That is that there are no brackets here in the g of x but there are a bunch of brackets in f at x. So what we should do is expand f at x and check if it's equal to g of x. So let's do that. By expanding what we do is we take f at x and expand this out. So x minus 4 all squared is going to be x squared minus 8x plus 16. And over here is explaining how that expansion goes. You could take an extra step to expand this out by writing x minus 4 doubled and then expand it out to be this. This is just the fast way to get there. The second part got expanded out as well and if you do an oi the oi being the outside and the inside part of foil, the outside, outer, and inner parts of foil, the oi minus x plus 2x will give us plus x. So when you expand this out, you will end up having 2x squared minus 16x plus 32 minus x squared minus x plus 2. And now you can collect like terms because there are no brackets left. And it turns out to be x squared minus 17x plus 34. Now, you may be thinking, well, they look really close to each other, but they're not exactly the same. So therefore, this does not equal g of x, and f at x does not equal g of x. So no, they are not equal. All right, next part. We need to understand what a restriction is. A restriction on a graph is when a hole appears. So you'll see here, in this example, this is a straight line, except for this right here. There's a hole right here in the little piece right here. And that hole affects the, uh, the entire question. It turns out that this line, which looks like a straight line, has a little empty spot. That empty spot is where the denominator is equal to zero. In this case, the restriction here is negative 3 plus 3 is equal to 0. So at negative 3, the x is negative 3, cannot be negative 3 anywhere on this line. Now, sometimes a restriction turns into a vertical asymptote, and we'll see examples of this later on in this unit. But very important to note is that you will either have a hole as such or a vertical asymptote, depending on the question. You're going to learn more about that in, the, in next year in advanced functions. All right, now, this hole that appears here is known as a restriction, remember? And x cannot equal negative 3 because the denominator will be 0. Therefore, a hole appears in the graph. Now, how does this compare to the equation? So looking at the equation, we saw that the whole x equals negative, th negative 3 turns out to be where the denominator will be 0. So we're going to see it algebraically now. If we look at the function as such, that was the exact same equation that we had on the graph, and we were to factor the numerator, we can determine that the restriction will have to be x cannot equal negative 3. You must state restriction, folks, at the actual question or just below it. So at the actual question or just below it. We usually state the restriction in a box, folks. Okay. And something else to note is that you cannot reduce any rational expression unless you stated the restrictions. So, the restrictions on any rational function is or are the value or the values that could possibly make the denominator zero. 
This is because a rational expression can never be divided by zero. No rational expression can ever, ever be divided by zero. So in this case, negative 3 is not a valid answer, uh, a valid x value, because it will make the denominator zero. A rational expression is the quotient of two polynomial functions. Now, two polynomial functions divided by each other, and this is very important that where the denominator, in this case q, does not equal zero. So that is the restrictions we must state in order to have a rational expression. Example number two. Simplify and state any restrictions. So you have an equation as such, and you need to simplify and state restrictions. The rule is, is that you have to factor the numerator, okay? In this case, we can tell the restriction right away, but we can't always tell. Sometimes we can, sometimes we can't. So we're taking a license that allows us to cancel any anything that we can. X cannot equal negative 5 because if I put negative 5 here plus 5 that will give me 0. So I'm factoring the numerator and it turns out that the numerator can have X plus 5 times X plus 1 and the bottom has X plus 5. So common factor first then we factor what's going on here so the product is 5 the sum is 6, so that will be 5 and 1. And we notice that x plus 5 can cancel. As long as we have our license to cancel, that is the restrictions, we can go ahead and proceed to cancel this. And we cancel x plus 5, and we're left with 2 times x plus 1. Moving forwards, another example x squared plus 3x over x squared plus 5x plus 6. What do we do here? Well, again, we want to factor, factor the numerator, factor the denominator, and that will allow us to state restrictions. Now, very important is how to factor using decomposition. Many students have difficulty factoring. So it's really important that you work on factoring. My method, the OI, is a lot faster, but a lot of students want to use decomposition. So I'll show you using a simple trinomial as such. x squared plus 5x plus 6 means that our sum is 5x, our product is 6, so product is 6, sum is 5, and what we want to do is find out what two numbers multiply to give us 6 and add to give us 5. Well, that's going to be x plus 3x plus 2x, because 3 plus 2 gives us 5, and 3 times 2 gives us 6. Now, what we do is we take the first two pieces, and we common factor out the x to give us x plus 3, x times x plus 3, and the second piece we common factor a 2, a plus 2 out of it, and we get plus 2 times x plus 3. So now this is what we've done thus far. What you'll notice is there's an x plus 3 in both pieces. So we take out x plus 3. We're left with x plus 2. And now these are the factors that you would put underneath. Please do not ever show decomposition within a question. It is to be done on the side, not within the question. Now, we need a license, a license to cancel. So restrictions in this case are going to be x cannot equal negative 3 and negative 2. The reason I have negative 3 first and negative 2 second is because we should be listing them in order. If you do them in order right from the beginning, it makes a lot more sense later on when you'll be forced to do it. All right, x plus 3 
cancels with x plus 3, so we're left with x over x plus 2. All right, and that's the end of this one. Let's move on to a harder one. 6x squared plus 7x plus 2 over 6x squared minus 2x minus 4. Again, let's show a decomposition to be able to factor these. So 6x squared plus 7x plus 2. We need a product of 12, that is the first and the last, and a sum of the middle, which is 7. What two numbers multiply to give us 12 and add to give us 7? Well, that's 3 and 4. So we're going to have 6x squared plus 3x plus 4x, or plus 4x plus 3x, plus 2. From that, we common factor out a 2x from the first two, and from the second part, I'm just going to common factor a plus 1 times 3x plus 2. Now you'll notice there's 3x plus 2 in both cases, so 3x plus 2 times 2x plus 1, and that's the final factors for the numerator. We now do the denominator. 6x squared minus 2x minus 4 means we common factor a 2, and we have a product of negative 6, a sum of negative 1. That means that we're going to have 3x squared minus 3x plus 2x minus 2. Common factor of 3x, we get 3x times x minus 3, sorry, 3x times x minus 1 plus 2 times x minus 1 common factor, that x minus 1, so we now have the common factor of 2 still there, the x minus 1 out, and we're left with 3x plus 2. Alright, so the numerator will have 3x plus 2 times 2x plus 1, the denominator will have 2 times 3x squared minus x minus 2 because we had to common factor then the numerator will have the denominator with 2 times 3x plus 2 times x minus 1. The restriction is x cannot equal the following folks, 1 and negative 2 over 3. 1 for this one and negative 2 over 3 for this one. Now how do you know, how do you get this restriction? This is something that a lot of students have difficulty with. So I'm just going to show it to you over here. 3x cannot equal 0. How do we get that? Oh, there's a lot more there. Let's just move just a little bit more so that we can see that. So what that means is when we have 3x plus 2 equals, again, here we go, try that now. When we have 3x plus 2 cannot equal 0, means that plus 2 moves over, it becomes negative 2, and then we're going to divide by 3 to get us negative 2 over 3. Logically, though, folks, we want to write this in order. So we would write it as, okay, let's just fix that. Let's fix the restrictions. So we would have the restrictions 